Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Elseworlds Part 2. So this is the second episode, Arrow Season 7, Episode 9, and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about today. There was more content in this episode that we have to break down and review and talk about. So yeah, I'm very excited to talk about it with you guys today. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Share this video around so everyone can see what everyone thinks of the Elseworlds crossover so far and also please be sure to subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any videos later this year or tomorrow with my final review for the Elseworlds crossover in part three so let's talk about part two so I thought this was a massive step up I loved last episode but this really really delivered it was just absolutely everything that I wanted in the crossover and I felt like there was so much substance in this episode but also there were great fight scenes led by Bamford's brilliant direction and also a progression in the story that was really really well put together and so I really really like this this is a five star episode for sure and so we're gonna sort of go through it bit by bit and talk about the different things in the episode so let's break it down so Barry, Cara and Oliver in this episode they go to Gotham and this is where they meet Kate Kane and Batwoman. So Kate Kane is actually Bruce Wayne's cousin in the TV show and she actually bails them out because she doesn't want Green Arrow, that being Barry at this time, in her city. So that's the only reason why they meet. And so she's taken headquarters in Bruce Wayne's old building in Wayne Enterprises. And in this episode we get some really interesting total nods to Batman and they've officially confirmed he's real He's been missing and she doesn't actually know. She's sort of searching and trying to understand why Bruce Wayne and Batman left. Obviously the same person. And really interestingly, in this episode, Superman is revealed to actually know Batman or at least a version of Bruce from Earth 38 most likely. And so they're frenemies as Kara says, but that officially confirms they've teamed up together before. They're is a Batman on Earth 38 which is just crazy and I was sort of freaking out listening to this. And additionally when we head towards the end of the episode Kara knows that Batwoman is in fact Kate Kane and she hasn't told anyone but I really like the connection between Batwoman and Supergirl though it was really there and although I have to say Batwoman really wasn't in that much of the episode she was brilliant in the scene she was in so I really do want the Batwoman TV show very impressed by Ruby with the little amount of content maybe she appears next episode I highly doubt it but that would have been really awesome if we maybe got a bit more of her but we get to see Batwoman in some Arkham Asylum fight scenes and interacting with her characters a little bit and she just really looks the part and she looks great. So then we move on to the massive stuff in this episode. I want to skip to the crisis information. And so Earth-90 Flash throughout this episode tries to breach. And that is one of the reasons why there is the red skies around him. Because he's trying to get there but he's stuck in between trying to get to this Earth and warning them of the monitor and what he's doing and he fully reveals the plan we'll talk about in a minute we'll talk about that in a minute but when he arrives later in the episode he reveals that he is in fact Barry Allen so it's confirming yes this version is the 90s flash version they've essentially canonized it but a massive massive DC Comics reference is dropped and this confirms that Green Lantern exists and John Diggle is in fact the Green Lantern on Earth-90. So that is just mind-blowing. They actually confirmed that Green Lantern does exist in this universe, that John Diggle, a version of him as everyone's been theorizing about, actually is the Green Lantern. So he goes, you don't have your ring on. So essentially it's just like a little nod for us DC Comics fans, but it's mind-blowing. So that officially confirms Green Lanterns do exist and John Diggle is the Green Lantern on Earth-90 at least. Moving on from that, to do with the Earth-90 Flash played by John Wesley Shipp, he teases that a crisis is coming and he officially reveals, and this is probably the biggest part of the episode, that there is something, something even more dangerous than him or anyone or black suited Superman coming and that is in fact the Anti-Monitor. They never said his name but that is definitely what he's hinting at and he says that he's trying to find the champions to save the multiverse and this will be in the next crossover because they're totally teasing Crisis on Infinite Earths and he talks about the collision of realities and the Monitor is in fact testing these realities to see which heroes 
can actually withstand a crisis and can actually help stop this and he talks about reality sort of colliding and Earth 1 is doing pretty good right now they're not doing the best that they can and John Deegan actually didn't change it enough so at the end of the episode he actually changes reality again and he wants to fully test our heroes to see if they can withstand the threat that is incoming. So that official reveal essentially sets up the next crossover and what's to come. Due to the fact that this even more powerful entity is coming with a crisis, he's going to cause this crisis and they need heroes in order to stop it and this is most definitely to do with Crisis on Infinite Earths. Look forward to that most likely next year so I'm just incredibly excited to actually see that when it officially plays out. So yes, this new reality at the end of the episode is created with Barry and Oliver becoming the Trigger Twins. They don't have the powers, they don't have the skill sets, and essentially reality is reset again. So everything is back to square one, and Diaz, Merlin, and Joe, who was Deathstroke earlier in the episode, actually play cops at the end, but they can't take down Barry and Oliver as the Trigger Twins, so they are rather infamous, and we know Later next episode, James Olsen's going to be appearing, Cisco's going to be there, they're going to be a different version of themselves. There's the Black Superman at the end of the episode, which is a major reveal scene to tease next episode, and we know he's going to be getting that book at some point later in the third episode, so look forward to that. We don't really know if he's evil or not. He seems to be like a hero. But I think he is more dark and I think he is actually a villain because we know he actually will fight our heroes when they get their powers back later in the next episode. So just some absolutely groundbreaking things that are being told in the story. And so we move on to talk about the direction of this episode. I think James Manford does such a great job intertwining these fight scenes. These fight scenes that have been on Arrow recently are just insane. That's what probably was lacking for me the most last episode. There was barely any actual good fight scenes in the Flash episode. It was just CGI fight scenes, but seeing like Diggle, Batwoman, all these people actually doing it hand to hand with the camera movement, it was just amazing. And so yeah, kudos to that because it was just incredible to watch. And I have to mention that opening scene, switching with like Barry actually kissing Felicity with Laurel actually helping Barry and then Barry in prison as Oliver Queen was just absolutely brilliant. I don't know why they didn't do it in the first episode with Oliver as the Flash. I think that would have been hilarious, but this was an amazing start to the episode. I really, really enjoyed that. I had a good laugh, especially when Barry kissed Felicity. I was like, oh god, what is happening? And so yeah, we see more of the Arrow characters this episode. Additionally, there is some major reveals in regards to Gotham and what's going on so we get to see Nora Freeze and she is in fact Mr. Freeze's wife and she's played by Stephen Amell's wife in the crossover so she has little parts and you see Bane's mask that is a really nice easter egg she fights Killer Frost which is a teaser for Mr. Freeze eventually hopefully showing up because she uses Mr. Freeze gun you can see it says V Freeze and that means Victor Freeze and that's his actual name in the comics and you get to see Crane and his gas, if you didn't know who that is, that is Scarecrow. So Scarecrow exists in this universe. So they're confirming a whole load of things. They've confirmed Bane, Mr. Freeze, and Scarecrow all in basically one continuous scene in Arkham Asylum. So Oliver and Barry start fighting each other, but they see themselves as Reverse Flash and Malcolm Merlin. That was just an excellent fight scene. And just bringing back Reverse Flash once again after the mid-season finale for The Flash is just so amazing. And I just love seeing that. Also seeing John Barrowman back as Malcolm Merlin once again. Love that. And so moving on, we're going to finally actually talk about what's to come next episode. Because we've essentially covered the main things in this episode. And... So it's going to get probably a bit darker, but I really do like the tone they've been going for. It's a nice balance. There's a lot of humour, but also there is that element of darkness surrounding them with this crisis incoming. And so next episode, I think we're going to get the true answers as to who's actually coming. I think the Monitor may name drop it right at the end of the crossover, maybe saying the Anti-Monitor. I do think we're going to get more answers setting up next crossover, and also we're going to see Black Suited Superman 
Superman, we're going to see Superman return, we're going to see Lois Lane return, which is very exciting, really liked them in the first episode, and additionally we're going to see Alex for the first time in this crossover, and apparently we're going to see a Legends character at some point. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video, I really, really loved this episode, I thought it was definitely a better episode than the first, I really loved the first, but this was just an ace episode, so... Look forward to tomorrow's video. I'm going to be doing my review when that comes out. But anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. It doesn't make us strong. It doesn't make us weak. Tongue tied to service like shark creep.